Imagine a metal so rare, you could fit the world's entire annual supply in the palm of your hand. And yet, this tiny amount can help fight one of humanity's deadliest diseases, cancer. It's an unassuming silvery metal hidden deep within the periodic table. On its own, it's not much to look at, but in the hands of medical researchers, it becomes a powerful tool for saving lives. Today, we're diving into how lutetium has found a surprising role in cancer-fighting drugs and why it might just be one of the quiet heroes of modern medicine. Right here on History of Simple Things. Lutetium is one of the rare earth elements, though ironically, it's not truly rare in the sense of being scarce in the earth's crust. It's just difficult to extract because it hides in mineral ores mixed with other similar elements. Named after Lutetia, the ancient Roman name for Paris, it was officially discovered in 1907. Despite its metallic shiny appearance, Lutetium isn't used for jewelry or electronics on a massive scale. For decades, it was more of a scientific curiosity than a household name. But as researchers learn more about the properties of its radioactive isotope, lutetium-177, they realized it could be a game-changer in cancer therapy. The secret to lutetium's medical power lies in one very special form, lutetium-177. This isn't the stable metal you might find in a lab drawer. This is a radioactive isotope, meaning its atoms are unstable and naturally release energy in the form of radiation. Now, radiation and cancer might sound like a dangerous mix, and it can be, if uncontrolled. But when used in a targeted way, certain types of radiation can actually destroy cancer cells from the inside. Lutetium-177 emits what's called beta radiation, which can travel only a short distance in the body. This makes it perfect for precision medicine. It can hit the cancer cells directly without causing massive collateral damage to surrounding healthy tissue. Of course, just having a radioactive isotope isn't enough. You need a way to deliver it exactly where it's needed, like sending a guided missile to its target. That's where something called radio ligand therapy comes in. Here's how it works. Scientists attach the lutetium-177 to a special molecule called a ligand. This ligand acts like a homing device. It's designed to bind to specific proteins or receptors found on the surface of certain cancer cells. When injected into the bloodstream, these ligands travel around the body until they find their matching target. Once the lutetium ligand combo locks onto the cancer cell, the beta radiation from lutetium-177 gets to work, damaging the cancer cell's DNA and ultimately killing it. One of the biggest breakthroughs for lutetium therapy has been in treating advanced prostate cancer, specifically a type known as metastatic castration-resistant prostate cancer, or MCRPC. In recent years, Clinical trials have shown that lutetium-177 linked to a molecule called PSMA-617, which homes in on the prostate-specific membrane antigen, can significantly slow the progression of the disease. Patients receiving this treatment have not only seen extended survival times, but also improvements in quality of life. For people who've exhausted other options, this has been a ray of hope. While prostate cancer has been the headline grabber for lutetium-based therapy, it's not the only application. Researchers are exploring how this could be used against neuroendocrine tumors, a rare type of cancer that often starts in the pancreas or gastrointestinal tract. In 2018, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration approved a lutetium-based drug called Lutathera for these tumors, marking one of the first major commercial successes for this technology. Since then, 
studies have been branching out into other cancers, including certain breast, kidney, and even brain cancers. Wherever scientists can identify a reliable target for the lutetium to lock onto. So what's it like to receive a lutetium-based cancer treatment? Unlike chemotherapy, which can involve months of frequent infusions and comes with widespread side effects like hair loss and severe nausea, lutetium therapy is typically given as an intravenous injection once every several weeks. Patients are monitored for a short time afterward, but most can go home the same day. Side effects tend to be milder, fatigue, dry mouth, and sometimes temporary changes in blood counts. While it's not free from risk, it's generally better tolerated than many traditional cancer treatments. Lutetium-based drugs only work if there's a clear target for the ligand to lock onto, which means not all cancers can be treated this way. Also, producing lutetium-177 isn't easy. It's made in nuclear reactors by bombarding ytterbium-176 with neutrons, and only a handful of facilities worldwide are capable of doing this at the necessary scale. Then there's the cost. Lutetium treatments can be expensive, and access varies widely between countries. For patients in low-resource settings, these therapies may still be out of reach. Despite these challenges, the future looks bright for lutetium in cancer therapy. Researchers are experimenting with combining lutetium therapy with other treatments, like immunotherapy or chemotherapy, to attack cancer from multiple angles. There's also ongoing work on theranostics, a combination of therapy and diagnostics, where doctors first use a similar non-radioactive tracer to see exactly where in the body the ligand will bind. Once confirmed, they swap in the lutetium-177 version for treatment. This personalized approach could make lutetium therapy even more precise and effective. So the next time you glance at the periodic table, take a look at element number 71, lutetium. It may not have the fame of gold, silver, or platinum, but in the quiet, determined battle against cancer, it's proving that sometimes the real treasures are the ones that can save lives. For patients facing late-stage cancer with limited options, this silvery element offers more than just treatment. It offers hope. And in medicine, hope can be just as powerful as any drug. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.